everybody. Welcome back to the Daily Smash for Tuesday, May 9th, 2023. I'm Rick. I'm Kelly. Cheers, baby. Happy Taco Tuesday. Coming up, how you can help one of our patrons who could use your help. Also, an amazing twist in the Dylan Mulvaney Bud Light story. First, cheers. Again. Mmm. And a reminder that Ilya sponsors the Daily Smash. Mm. <laughs> you can get yours delivered right to your door at 10% off at Ilya.com using the discount code Rick and Kelly 10. And you can use Rick Ampersand Kelly or Rick A-N-D Kelly. That is so good. <laughs> that was uh, Layla Joy Williams' idea to have both discount codes work. Mm-hmm. I respect that. I want to go and visit her in uh, Spain. Spain next summer. Yes. We have a cruise in Croatia next July. And my plan is to do a European tour after that. Yeah, we could do it with our smashers. <laughs> yeah, you want to meet us there? Uh-huh. Come meet us in Europe next summer. I'm going to have to get in shape. Uh Oh, I want to tell us tell everyone about our scratch off success. We're on a roll right now. We hit we hit the derby, and then we were out running errands today with the top down, and it was so beautiful. Sorry, so beautiful. I had a little here. itch on my nose. Oh, sorry. And Kelly goes, "Let's go get some scratch off tickets." No, I said I'm feeling lucky yeah. right now. I'm feeling lucky, Rick. Yeah, that's good. I, and and I really don't typically play scratchers, but I felt like. I'm lucky, like, and, and I felt like that before, and I won. So yeah. tell them what happened. Well, we went to this uh, lucky liquor, store. This one liquor store that's a very lucky liquor store. And they said somebody won in that store two point two million dollars for the Derby. In that store, was that a scratch off? No, it was like the they played that you can play the derbies in there. Oh, daily. I didn't know, oh, I didn't realize that. No, oh, the yeah. daily derby. The daily derby. Oh yeah. But but there's a lot of winners in there. Like it's a lucky. It's already on 17th Street. So I think I put in a total of sixty dollars into the machines to print out to to get scratch off tickets. Some of them were twenty bucks and some of them were five bucks. And so you scratched and you had one winner for fifteen dollars. Mm-hmm. And then I scratch. And I, I just like to go to the end. Like, I don't like to play because it's like nonsense Yeah, to me. she doesn't even do the thing, the game. She just scratches off the serial number yeah, and, and it stands takes, it. Yeah, like, I don't want to take time. Like, it's just like, it's boring. <laughs> For me, it's like, I'm, I want to get my money's worth. He likes to play it. Like, he... <laughs> I like the sport of it. Yeah. But, but the truth is, I scratched off this one ticket and there were so many things on there. I didn't even know if I won. That's why I, said, I don't like to even do it because it's so confusing. So I said, hey, babe, can no, you, you go, check? You, no, you go, I think I won something on here. So I checked. And it was 200 bucks. And I've never won $200 on a scratch off ticket in my life. And I won 15. So we won roughly $150. And then you got a ticket back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I got a free ticket. So you, we invested 60 and we walked away with 215. So we won 155 bucks. Yep. Bam. <laughs> <laughs> Which didn't pay for even but it was half so of your funny new phone. The, the guy that was there, he he was like, I said, do you find typically like if someone wins, do um and they put it back again, do they win again? He goes, Typically people that win always put their money right back into the into the he goes, It's just like tickets? Vegas. The he reinvesting? Like, yeah, yeah. He goes, It's just like Vegas. But we walked away. <laughs> we did. We knew when to stop. We did. Yeah. And we got a Mega and a Powerball, one each. And I have a good feeling about it. <laughs> uh, well, updates coming. Um, as you watch this, we may be on our way to Palm Desert. We may have already gone to, to Palm Desert. We may be on our way back from Palm Desert. Oh, it's my uncle, Joe. Hold on a you second. You need to take that? We'll be right back. Hold on a second. <sighs> that was your uncle about your... My, my dad's... Um, we're throwing my dad an 80th birthday party. June seventeenth. Yeah, in Phoenix. In, in Scott Phoenix. Scott? No, in Phoenix. Yeah. And uh, that was his brother, my uncle Joe, and he is so kind enough to. A lot of my cousins are putting in, getting involved, and uh -huh. uh, of course, you know, I, I called my brother Eric, and I said, "Hey, we need to put in a grand each," and he said, "That's very, fine," which is so nice. And he yeah, seemed, very and, and and my uncle Joe seems so 
Didn't he seem oh, over the moon like we, yeah. that we're helping out? Yeah. No, very appreciative. Very appreciative. Yeah, because I think that was going to come out of his pocket, and now he doesn't have to. Yeah. I mean, he, but he's putting it all together, which is so nice. Well, you know, your dad only turns 80 once. I know. But, you know, it was really nice of my brother Eric to step up. I um, yeah. don't know if my other brother JR will, but uh, luckily my brother Eric is. I don't know. I, told, yeah. I don't talk to my older brother Eric, JR because I got in a fight with him. Family's tough. Yeah. Um, as I, w- I was starting to say, when he called about Palm Desert and our pickleball court, we should know tomorrow, we will know sometime on this day, Tuesday, whether or not we get our permit. And then we're going to tell the whole story. Oh, then you guys can hear the whole entire story of yeah. what happened. Yeah. I wanted to um, share this story that I didn't tell yesterday about Dylan Mulvaney and Bud Light. We've been hearing about how Bud Light sales are down 20 to 40% because of the whole Dylan Mulvaney controversy. And, of course, it was a campaign. Not even a campaign. They they put Dylan Mulvaney's face on cans for Dylan Mulvaney. But then Dylan Mulvaney posted it, and everyone went nuts like about it. And all these hardcore good old boys who drank Bud and Bud Light are like, I'm not drinking Bud or Bud Light anymore. <laughs> and... But you would assume that the gay and trans community would be big Bud Light supporters because of that whole situation where a marketing person gave but, Dylan Mulvaney but, but, but cans Dylan with his Mulvaney face on. But Dylan is not a transgender. That's the thing. He's he's still got his male his parts. Male parts. And well, so I don't understand why I, people are are like. I think if you say you're it. if you say you're converting from one to the other, then that makes you trans. Isn't that just like a cross-dresser? Hey, listen, I'm not an expert, but I do <laughs> want to share the rest of this story, which is that Chicago gay bars have now boycotted Bud products. <laughs> <laughs> and she, Kelly goes, you're damned if you do, and you're damned if you don't. Yeah. <laughs> Five Chicago gay bars are boycotting Anheuser-Busch for distancing, its, distancing itself from transgender social media star Dylan Mulvaney. So they didn't go far enough once this whole thing blew up to support Dylan Mulvaney, <laughs> like they, instead of going all in, they kind of pushed back. So now these gay bars are like, well, then we're not going to drink your beer. So <laughs> neither side's drinking their beer. Sidetrack Bar in Chicago's Lakeview neighborhood shared its boycott plan on Instagram, noting the brewers' moves strongly bring into question their support of the LGBTQ plus okay, community. First of all, my gay friends are not drinking Bud Light. Okay, <laughs> first and foremost. All right, they're drinking like Peroni. They're drinking like Modelo. They're drinking like kind white of, wine spritzers. Yeah, white wine spritzers. I like, don't know. No, drinking um, uh, Aperol spritz. Okay, champagne, a little bit of Aperol. My gay friends are not drinking Bud Light. Okay, <laughs> Bud Light is for like the good old. Yeah, but there these gay bars were serving it, and now they won't. Bud Light's recent decision to drop the Dylan Mulvaney campaign to put on leave those who created it, as well as a statement by its CEO, wrongly, wrongfully validates the position that it is acceptable to acquiesce to the demands of those who do not support the trans community. So I guess they're uh, transphobic too. Who? Bud Light, Anheuser-Busch. Or, tr- or trans. Well, transphobic. Or transphobic. Everyone's I, transphobic. It, it, if you do say or do anything... It's a phobia. It's not fully supportive. Fully supporting. You're phobic. You can't phobic make, means you're scared. You can't okay? make a joke or make fun or or have it, you know, put Dylan Mulvaney's face on Heather DeBro's body. They want to put you into a category <laughs> right. of you. Um, if you disagree, you are. They want to put you that you're a racist. You're automatically you're a, a bigot. Bad yeah. You're automatically a bad person because you do not agree. Okay, I, it's yeah. like whatever. You know what? I don't agree with these guys men being in women's sports and I don't agree with moms mutilating their kids and putting them on hormone blockers under the age of 18. Okay? That's not being phobic. And if you call me phobic, then fine. Go ahead. Yeah. I don't really care. Uh, in other news. In other news. We want to we want to share In other a, news. In other news, we want to share a link to a baby registry on Amazon. And I don't know how to do it on the screen, but I'm going to put it in the show description. If you guys could tell us how to do it, we don't know. I called my friend Kylie Pratt today to ask her. We hope this will work. I'm going to put the link in the description for Lise Pratt's 
who lives down in Summerfield, North Carolina. She's one of our patrons, and she's going through a really tough time. She's she's due in seven weeks with her third baby or fourth baby? I think her fourth baby. She's a sweet, sweet woman. And somebody, somebody rudely, and I don't think you meant it rudely, actually. That's my brother, Eric. Um, I don't think you meant it rudely, um, but you said, how could somebody have a Patreon and uh, th- they need to get their priorities straight? Well, they paid for the year up front. Yeah, she paid well before Well before her husband, her husband kicked her out on the streets, okay? Yeah. So we've all experienced where we could afford something one minute and then be like hard on our luck the next, okay? we I think every single person out there has done that once in their life, whether you're like 13, 15, whatever. Yeah. I think we can all empathize with, uh, with Lise and we just love her so much and she's just such a good mom and uh, she's going through a hard time. So I really, really would love for you guys to like help out any way you can, even if it's like $15 or whatever. So, yeah, so we're, we're going to buy her some stuff and we hope that other people will chip in and just so that, you know, that she started crying on our zoom call and then we all started crying when we, when another patron, Aaron McDonald came up with the idea to, to gift her some stuff. So I, I just think it's a really warm, wonderful thing to do, and, I, and I'm excited about it. And I hope you guys. And, can and, and I think help this out. is what's so great about this community is that we are here to help each other out. You know, this is what we're here for, and you know, I, I just, I just, I, I just love giving back any way I can, and it's to it's actually to somebody that I really know and love so much. So yeah, yeah. Um, you wanted to talk about. Kim Zolciak, uh-huh. who filed for divorce from Troy Bierman. I, I don't know her, but you've met her before? I've met her, like, yeah, we've been, like, because, you know, we used to do all these events together, and yeah. I've met her maybe four times. She's a very, very nice lady. She was on The Real Housewives of Atlanta? Mm-hmm. Um, she had her own show, uh, Tardy for the Party. Uh, she's, she's a really nice lady. I mean, she was very nice to me. Uh, yeah. I feel, I know they're going through some hard hard uh financial stuff uh you know it's it's weird to me because she was probably making a million dollars a year or close to it and he was making some money he was a professional athlete a oh, football player oh okay and uh they, they bought their house for uh, allegedly for like eight hundred eighty thousand dollars. yeah like how do you possibly foreclose and you've been making that much money that many years. How do you foreclose? Was on the house not worth more than they paid for it? She said she put millions and millions of dollars. Maybe that means uh, they were upside down. I don't know. But to me, I don't understand how you may, you're making that much money for that. It, it, she must have had a, a crazy burn rate. Where well, that's the thing. I mean, if you overspend, if you live beyond your means, then it's easy to get into financial difficulty. Mm-hmm. Well, right. Best of luck to uh, to both of them. I know. So sad, though. It's so sad. They have four babies. Wow. Like, not babies, but young. Children. Children. I'm listening to these cars out here, and they're like, they sound like, <laughs> they're like, you know, the electric cars. Oh, yeah. They sound like spaceships. They do. Don't they? We might get one. Yeah. In the news now. In the news. I have two items. The first is that Happy Days star Scott Bayo has announced he's leaving California due to the homeless crisis and crime. You and everybody else, Scott Bayo. I mean, honestly, honestly, Orange County is the only area that you do not feel like you're in California. Swear. I swear. And everybody that we know from L.A., they're moving down here. Yeah. It's the craziest thing. Like... Yeah, it's, or if they're not moving, they say they wish they were, but they're stuck there for whatever reason. I don't understand how these people are still voting for this. Chachi <laughs> has announced that he's leaving the Golden State due to the state's out of control homeless crisis. After 45 years, I'm making my way to finally exit stage right from California, he said. The most recent survey conducted by the Los Angeles Homeless Services Authority found approximately 69,000 people experiencing homelessness in L.A. County, 41,000 in 2022. So it's 50% more in a year. 
The Charles in Charge actor blames the state's soft on crime initiatives for the rampant homelessness issues, tweeting that it brings down property value. And after decades of living in California, it's just not a safe place anymore. He did not say where he's moving. I bet you it's either Texas, uh, Florida, or Nevada. I vote Florida. <laughs> or Montana. I think he's going to Florida. That's my, my guess. They, 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 the article included a couple of pictures of some of these tents that have been set up on the sidewalks in L.A., which is obnoxious and awful, and they never should have let that happen in the first place. Find a place for these people to go. Don't let them they set up. They want to live on the streets. They might want to live there, but you can't let them live there. It's not fair to, to, to everyone else, to taxpayers, to families, to, to, to people who just want to, to walk up and down the sidewalk without... Stepping over there. First of mess. all, it's unsanitary. Yes, it is. Okay, that first and foremost. And what if you have a business on that block? Right, and you're paying taxes. It's Get them out. Unacceptable. I agree. Now, you sent me this item about a 102-year-old doctor mm -hmm. who shared the number one thing the healthiest and happiest people she knows never do. You know what that is? Yes, because I read it and I sent it to you. <laughs> I love uplifting stories rick likes negative nancy stories like the homeless thing i'm no, kidding i'm no <laughs> I'm totally just, kidding i'm kidding i look for things that you guys could relate to that that are making news that are um talkers you know like water cooler type stories no i like this story i read it and i find this um i find this read it okay and i'll comment on and it. and this dr gladys mcgarry wrote this in first she's, person. She's 102. I turned 102 years old this year, and my decades of experience in holistic medicine has taught me a lot about how to live a long, happy, and purposeful life. Too many people feed into unnecessary stress, but the happiest and healthiest people I know are able to let go of things or experiences that no longer serve them. Life is too short to ruminate and consider same thought over and over again. By doing so, you're essentially torturing yourself. Let go of things that drain your energy, yes. she says. See, I love stories like that. You know why? Because it only helps you. If you're holding on and you're angry all the time and you're holding on to the past, it takes more energy to be angry and mad and hold on to grudges than it's just to let it go, you know? It really does. Yeah. And like my brother JR, he holds on to grudges. He will not talk to me. You know, uh, I never did anything to him uh, at all. Uh, my niece went on social media and said, because she's woke, said that I was going to kill my dad because I went to Aspen and I was uh, traveling during COVID. Okay, well, she should have never went on social media and called me out. Yeah, it's a family matter. I'd never killed my dad. My dad's 80 years old. He's not going anywhere. And that wasn't her place. Uh, I, I found it. Uh, and my brother, JR, when I went to my uncle's funeral, my mom's, my mom's brother, Charles, he had, didn't want it. I said, hi, how are you? Was he so rude to me? He was. Holding on to grudges, holding on to these things. Michael Dodd. I see, I see he's angry. He holds on to grudges. He looks like Santa Claus. And I'm not over-exaggerating. He's like 280 pounds. He's like, like he's like, he's got, he looks like Santa Claus. He's, he's got this beard that comes out to, he just looks angry and mean. And you can see it. Unhappy. You can see it. Like he, that was never him. He was never like that. But holding on to grudges and holding on to negative energy yeah. takes more energy, and it really kind of eats you up inside. She goes on to say, my mom taught me an easy way to release things that don't matter. She would raise her hand gently in front of us, fingers held loosely, palm up, then swoop it down and back and say, it doesn't matter. Now, you guys are probably thinking, well, you're like that with Heather uh, Dubrow. I get a kick out of it. <laughs> Honestly, it kind of makes me, it, it makes me laugh. I, I like... I, I'm not holding on to grudges. If I were to see her, I would probably be pleasant. But I just kind of like taunting her because she's such a, a, a know-it-all, show-off, narcissistic, mean person. And it's sport at this and point. And it's sport. <laughs> it's sport, <laughs> yes. So uh, let go, relax, 
Enjoy your life. Don't Have hold fun. on to resentment. Let it go. Honestly, that's yeah. that's okay. That's the lesson of the day. <laughs> yeah. We're going to have big news for you tomorrow, so stay tuned here to the Rick and Kelly Show channel on YouTube. And we'll let you know if we got our permit or not. If you haven't subscribed yet here on YouTube, please do so now. We can't wait to tell you the story of what happened. It's a great story. It's like almost a, so it's a great story. It's going to be a movie. It is. It's going to be a book. Yeah. Also, uh, the Rick and Kelly Show on Patreon.com. We told you about one of our, a couple of our patrons. We want you to be our patrons, too. We want we you to a be a part community. of our community, yes. Yeah. It, yeah, yeah, it is a community. Yeah. And it's a meaningful community. And we have a lot of fun. And the 90th show is this week. Woo! Bam. 90. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Yeah, thank you, guys.